Test, test. test, test. We have sound. Hello, peeps. Where's this microphone gone? Oh, it's over here. Click on crunching, crunching. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so what I've been up to. Um, in the last week, I have learnt Vulcan properly. I actually read the Vulcan thing, as it were. Why is this coming up? Go away. Grief. Um, let's just click in here and get rid of that. So, yeah, Vulcan Renderer. Does it work? It certainly does. So, that's what we made in Blender. But this isn't the Blender file. The Blender file is not being used. What I'm using here is the file that I made from um, our, what would you call it, developer tool, our Convert Blender to Midnight project which has been updated obviously and works perfectly fine let's just have a look at that working so this is there you go that's convert blender to midnight that's what it does and this renderer this Vulcan render is uh, was made so that I could fix all of this garbage that we were given. We don't need that anymore. Interesting. So the model loader all of this lot from Asimp converts to loading a model that yeah a bit shorter isn't it as you can see I took out um, the model loader and inserted a file loader. Not bad for me, huh? Hello, viewer. Good to see you along. I've got no drinks. One second, I'll just get a drink. So Vulcan development has been started, and I mean started, no way is it anywhere near uh, release code. Um, a lot of the example that they gave us uh, was incomplete. So let's just have a look at that, shall we? So a lot of this... Um, <coughs> setting up of things like pipelines and stuff I mean this blend option is typical um, so we start creating the blend information which is the normal three items that you have to have in and then we come to the blend attachment state which is properly completed in this version and then we come back here to um, the descriptor, the color blend CB, and we completely fill this in. But we needed ATT for the attachment, so that's why we have this here. 
Attachment count one, because there's only one attachment, you can have more. And of course you fill in the rest. Um, that's not how it looks in the information given by QT. They missed a lot of this out. And the same goes with things like stencils and um, the depth stencil. It was completely... <clears throat> well, it was only half done. And that's why there was these mem sets going on. Because only half of it was being completed, so the rest had to be set to zero. That's what I call a lazy cheat. So you can see I started taking them out and filling them in properly. Interesting... Interestingly enough though, I don't think I filled them all in properly and I haven't checked them. So this is definitely not production code. I think there's still a lot missing out of this code. Um, yeah. How do we get it to work in the end? By adding, well, first of all, tidying up the command buffer, which I had two of for some reason, and then popping that in there. And that really did it. Um, I mean, you could probably just get away if you're using the um, example code that Qt gives you. You can probably just get away with that, making sure all the command buffers line up because I think they use CB instead of command buff or CMD buff. Um, anything else have changed here? No, I messed around with this rotation business, didn't I? But I'm not doing the rotation, I hope. No, I'm not. So, this isn't needed. That's just a rotation rubbish, which I don't need. Yeah, it's all taken out. Um, that was actually okay. RP begin info seemed okay. This mem set again. Hmm. I think we were missing those two. The offset X and offset Y, which they've used done. You well, the set it using mem set. I didn't look at that. You can tell. And that's your command buffer there. Hmm. Altogether, an interesting journey. Uh, through a lot of paperwork. Oh, black bubbly burpy liquid. So we've been through a lot of paperwork to get to Vulcan rendering and it works. I wouldn't say it works perfectly. I'm in a lot of doubts that the code is complete, but it works. I know it won't work if you put a complex model in it though. <coughs> I can guarantee that. If you put a model in it with over a thousand and twenty-four vertices, I think this code breaks. I'm not going to prove it, I don't really care. Got me time sorted out. Oh yes, I sorted out this timer business. How did I sort that out? above here it's here so if the current time and remaining time I had was less than or equal to one well that really needs to be the same as the thing that we're using here 
this delay mechanism. Otherwise it doesn't record properly. It still jumps at 10. Um, so you could make it 16, which is closer to 1. Well, 60 frames per second. But as 10 is what we were using here in this file um, to delay the timer coming into the main loop instantly. 10 milliseconds, that means. Um, then now, voila, everything works properly. There you go, FPS now works. And it's correct. The interesting thing is, on my machine, it comes out to 93 FPS. Which is a very interesting number. It means that 7 frames are being lost. Should be 100. If it took no time to actually generate and put the frame on the screen, it would be 100. So this is that FPS is out of 100. So it's 93% efficient. Not bad. It's a way of measuring it, I suppose. Might be a good use, useful, um, good use for FPS. That we know that seven percent of um, the time is now used rendering. So that is not point. Four five milliseconds, roughly. Don't know. <laughs> Need a calculator. Right, so that's that explained. Hmm. But that's not what I've really been up to. That was easy, that was two days. Sorting Vulcan out was just literally reading the manual. Nothing difficult to do there. Oh yeah, I was just looking up how to pull it in, pull it back in. And we got the answer. What I've really been doing is this. Rana OS is a new operating system developed by me in the last 24 hours. Yeah, I've written an operating system. We have to get rid of that, or else we can't see it. There you go. Welcome to Rana OS. A brand new operating system that was not in existence two days ago. I wrote it yesterday and I set it up on VirtualBox um, this morning. <clears throat> like I said, in the old days every single game on its own disk came with its own operating system so if I placed a file on here and told my operating system to run it would it run? well probably not because that's all my operating system does shall we look at it? Shall we look at the masses and masses of code that I wrote? It's easy to go through here. I popped it into Rana as Rana OS, didn't I? Here it is. There we go. So, our code is um, a kernel written in C++. There we go. Big kernel. Um, printf, I had to rewrite because we couldn't include anything. It's an operating system. 
so it's not inside an operating system. When you're inside an operating system, it's quite easy. You can use hash include. When you're the operating system kernel, you can't. So we had to um, use the video memory direct. Yeah. So that's why this string goes into the video memory direct. And there's your printf, welcome to Rana OS. So yeah, it's not a very good printf, in fact it's a rubbish printf. But I don't care, it doesn't even have backslash n in there. Should expand it. Um, extern c on these things means when it's compiled, the object code will keep the name. Didn't need it for printf because printf's an internal thing. So, now you know that, why did I need to extern C this lot? Well, basically, so that I could access it from assembler. If you use ASM code lens regularly, please support. Uh, you're getting taken off. If I use it regularly, I'm doing assembler too much. Think about it. So this is assembler language. We set our magic number to say that we are a kernel. Uh, we set our flags and, of course, uh, make a checksum so that we can make sure that we're the right size and everything for a kernel. Everything checks out for the CPU to recognize us. That's, that basically says, hey, CPU, we're a kernel. The interesting thing is we have to compile loader.s into kernel.cpp. Yeah, two different languages. That's the interesting part. Um, we have a multi-boot section telling, uh, telling it the information. We have a text section saying that we have kernel main external and call constructors external and we have a global loader which is us and the loader is here. We move the stack basically which is here. Stacks go backwards so that is moved onto the stack ESP. Uh, we call the constructors in the C, otherwise they won't work. If we do put constructors in there, they won't work unless we call them. Uh, we push EAX and EBX, which are the multi-boot structure and the magic number pushing those out so we can capture them in kernel main so that's those two variables and then we just call kernel main with those two variables being sent in after that we stop <coughs> kernel main takes over And prints F welcome to Rana. And goes into an endless loop. So basically, if that endless loop breaks, it's caught here by stop, uh, which will clear stuff, halt, and if that halt breaks, which it can jump to stop, that's the one thing that can't break. So it's got three fail safes in it to stop the damn thing carrying on. And um, trust me, CPUs really, really do fight against that kind of thing. So yeah, we can break a halt and we can break out of uh, a while loop. So you have to be careful. Uh, space we use is two megabytes. I'm not really sure we need that. But that's just the stack size. So we've got two megabytes in which we can have stack information. Uh, stack overflow if anybody knows about it. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. Who are you? Okay, you're the make system, aren't you? I'll leave you alone then. Right, so that we could get this assembler code to link with the kernel, we had to involve a file and tell our linker, which is LD on Linux, exactly how we wanted this lot to link. So this is linker script code. Yeah. So all this does is detail out exactly what sections there are and in which order we want them and what to discard at the end. So that keeps everything in the right order. And also keeps the right bits. And of course we wanted our section. We needed all of our sections as well. That's what they're for in assembler. The same sections are in C, C++, so that's lucky. Um, C++ has this read-only data as well. That's a different section. And that's roughly about it. So if we run all of that, we basically get a, a linker. LD, parameters using linker.ld. So yeah using a make file so I didn't I'm not bothered about install but kernel ISO is definitely big so we make a directory called ISO and then we initialize it with a configuration file for our grub uh, we make a rescue image out of this ISO directory we can then remove the directory we don't need it anymore and we have an ISO image here this ISO image is placed in here under storage. So as you can see, choose a disk file, mykernel.iso. If I put that one in, then it will make the other one that I've got here. So that's the other ISO that I've got, which is Manjaro XFCE Basic. Yeah, and that's how it's done. You make an ISO, you chuck it onto a VM, and you run it. And it boots. So what we've got there is all the code for booting. That's all. So it's the kernel... Uh, a way to link that the assembly which is a loader goes at the front of the kernel when they are assembled together into machine code so what you do is you make two object files and then you link them together using this information pretty simple make file goes through it quite easily um, you can even make kernel binary uh, which then turns into a kernel ISO. I'm quite surprised it works because it's so simple. All you have to do is know how to start uh, a boot and that's detailed on the internet. So uh, yeah, that I believe is very standard. It's in AS, which is new, GNU assembler code. A lot of the time you'll find this in NASM, which is what I was expecting to write it in. But, hey-ho. It's not very big, is it? 
it's 34 lines and weirdly it works the actual pro the the boot loader starts there all it does is sort the stack out and call the constructors and then pushes a couple of variables over to C++ and then calls the C++ and that's the beginnings of your kernel now what you have to do is write the rest of it the functionality the interactions between uh, hardware and hardware drivers you have to write all the hardware drivers as well which might sound tricky but it isn't it's very straightforward um, except for a couple of parts where um, legacy gets in the way hmm but good luck with those that's how you do it doobie doobie dum dum if you pop over to github and you go to Fraser Blade Sharp forward stroke Rana and instead of looking at the main you go and have a look at GFX dev you'll find all the code is here there's the assembler code there's the kernel, there's even a couple of notes saying what you can do so make mykernel.iso I needed to install libisoburn and mtools on Linux there's a couple of other things you might need but hey ho, it'll tell you if you need them so I left myself a note there that I had to install them they weren't already on this system because I don't have um, a disk burner on here. I've got no CD drive. So I didn't think it'd be necessary until I tried to do this. Um, it's picked up on... A, yeah. Should have cleaned it, shouldn't I, before I did that. Never mind. Doesn't matter. The three files... You, well, one, two, three... Three files and a text is all you need. And that renderer is here. Uh, which version have you got? You've got um, reading it from the game model. Yeah, so you've got that version. Could update that. The model has to be in the build directory as well. Uh, so Vulcan renderer build directory you'll find the base floor tile MMD is in here but so is the object and from blender so I've got all of them in in the actual build directory it's just to save me having to work out um, pathing which does need to be done and I'm still having problems thinking about it. Hey Polyglot, how are you going? Some shell scripting. Done a bit of that. Alright. Uh, no, 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 no shell scripting. That was a make file. Shell scripting is something completely different, but yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah, make files are fun. I don't like them. I hate make. I just hate this stuff. Look at it. This is what it generates. It's horrible. 
why? Why, why do this system? So you don't have to type it out yourself? Mm, okay. If you say so. Um, does it work? Yeah, it works, there you go. Because it's loading the model from this fi this directory. So if I transfer this to a different directory, I have to also transfer whichever model it's using to the same directory. Otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. But I'm glad it's all working now. So basically I just got all the programs working and then um, wrote an operating system on top. Yeah, not much. Now the operating system, if you're wondering what happens next... Um, basically, you would have to do the global dispatch table. Uh, let me see if I can remember this right. It's dispatch table. Um, the interrupt dispatch table. The IDT. That's what you would need to write next. So that you can capture system interrupts. That will then allow you to control hardware. But there's a problem. No, there isn't. There's no problem. I'm going to let you lot find out. If you do want to continue this and you do want to go and do the IDT. Heck, I could write it, I suppose. But... Um, Is it worth the time for the IDT? The IDT is a mess. In fact, I don't know why they put up with it anymore. I don't think they've straightened it out, have they? I mean, it's a complete mess. Even people who try to do that program and write that program to access the IDT uh, most go insane trying to do it I suppose it's that big a mess it's not hard to do it's just stupid there's no logic to it there's no logic to what they did and whoever did it well I would like to have words with that person. And you wonder why computers are messed up. Oh well. So that's it really. Uh, all I've got for you. Anybody want anything else? And I've just had to turn down another job again. Hm. Oh well. So, completed everything. <clears throat> all the programs work. They're all there on GitHub. And they are under the GFX dev part. I think that's awesome. This is going to be the shortest stream ever, unless somebody comes up with something quickly. Because that's it, me done. <laughs> Go look at the code.
Let's hold that. So you'll find the code that I've just done last week, Vulcan Render. I've also updated the Vulcan Widget. No, not the Vulcan Widget. I updated Convert to Blender for the same code. So the source code is roughly the same uh, under GFX. So the Vulcan rendering code is here. I don't think it's had as much love as the other one, but it's close enough. Should work. Just check that it does. Yeah, there's a lot of it. And it's not finished. Uh, yep, that'll work. So GFX Dev has well this has everything in it. Um all of these are now working. Quite interestingly. But it's what to do with them. We have a, a set of working um, files, programs. Could break the renderer down into something useful. I could update the readme file to say that you need the things in the model files need to be in the build directory. Might be helpful. Don't do it. Just don't do it. I could bring them all down to main, but then I'd be stuck on the main, wouldn't I? And um, these aren't finished programs. Mm. What to do with them all? We could make a game. We've got the dice. How good is this code? It's not that good. I'm using the utility, so that's not too bad. And we are creating objects, right, got you. Okay, so items is alright. We don't have any models for these items. Uh, 
Um, what needs doing on this? Except for the Vulcan rendering system being added. So we already have a rendering system which we can change to Vulcan. Set player position and move player. We just need an object to represent the player. We have items, data, okay, we have pictures, a JPEG, alright, fair enough. Implementation, we have mobile and output, ooh, mobile, ooh, yeah, we'll have everything in there, there's the player. Okay, we have assets. Cameras. Oh, we've got a camera. Woohoo. Let's just get position. We could complete the camera. The camera class is possibly one that I know the best now. Base mobile, then we've got mobiles.h. Which is, yeah, just includes. Okay, that has base mobile, okay. That's looking hopeful. Understand that. We do have a basic movement system. Wow. Basic rendering is done how? Text. Okay, our rendering is text. Based. That's a full system. <laughs> wow. So we do have a full system already in a library called Midnight. We could expand Midnight to include... Um, Things like um, the renderer. We can use our developer tools to convert 3D models into something that we like better. I think the easiest way to see that wrong computer. Away. So if you want to see that properly um, in the renderer, one well, I'm just messing about with the main sources main. What I've done is I've taken out the old code, and this is the code code using the new format that we we created in. Let's pop it in. Pop 
copy on screen. So if we look at developer tools, and convert Blender to Midnight, and the main. So what we did was we loaded. <coughs> We loaded it using asimp from an obj file and then we saved it out just as a data stream. So here I've just said well file open read only. Uh, the input is a data stream input send it into the storage. And that gets rid of this. That replaces all of this. So from here to here, oh, and this has even got um, the model location movement. So this little block of code here replaces everything in this file. All of this. This is run once for each model as we convert from Blender to Midnight, and then Midnight can load them up using that. Yeah. And that's why I wanted a developer tool to convert it. Interesting. So we still need the developer tool obviously left alone for more models. Basically we can do anything we want with that. The sky's the limit. It's just how much code you want to write. I'm not sure that this code, all of this code has to be gone through before I can bring it down into main. I think it's all past one code. I think even midnight's at past one. Maybe not. I know what that is. I know what that is. Oh yeah, I did it on Windows 11 as well. <laughs> oh well, there you go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Just goes to show, doesn't it, that the operating system really doesn't matter. What's going on here? And that's the old code. That's what we started with. And it works. So it's garbage. Okay. So there's no real good code in here. Hmm. 
I was developing the item warehouse separately. Hmm. Okay. Anybody want anything? Yep, nope, yep, nope, yep, 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 nope, nope, nope. Any messages? Oh, thank you, Yardez. Appreciate it. Uh... Sign in. Ooh, no thank you. <laughs> Where's the channel up to? Uh, we're up to modular programming example one, so that's in there. That's looking okay. Check through a lot of this now, so everything should be alright on here. Notifications. Okay, we got a like on that. So there's no other notifications there. I've just been given a job offer again, so that's been deleted. Don't need a job, thank you. Quite happy. Um, any other messages that might come from somewhere else? Discord. Um, the skies. No, nope. I'm on the last message. That checks out. Hmm. Well, I think I've covered everything. Publishing a game, yeah. OpenGL, we did that. Learning to program. Um, something missing here. Okay, let's get that sorted out for you. It's this one, add to playlist, programming, uh, save, that's that done. Um, hmm. There we go. This is why I check. There you go, modular programming example one is now in the list. Good. And of course we'll add today's, we can't, I have to wait 24 hours before I can upload, it's um, a Twitch rule, it's in the T's and C's for Twitch, uh, you've got to give them 24 hours of exclusive rights to your video. Uh, which is no skin off my nose, so I'll upload today or tomorrow. You got Discord? Yes, I do. If you want to contact me whilst I'm offline. keyboard. There you go. <laughs> Click on that. Join Discord. So if you need help with anything, feel free. Um, if you write a message in here, by the way, and I'm not on, I still get the message. It's on my phone, which is why I'm not actually logged into that right now. 
There you go, Silent Z. Welcome to Discord. Uh, welcome. Got to get the right keyboards now. You're making me used to computers here. So, yeah. That's on Discord. Those message, Any messages in there will come through to my phone, so my mobile phone, so I always keep track of what's going on in there. Uh, if anybody needs help with something, they just put a message. doesn't matter what time of day it is, because I'm an insomniac. Lucky me. I think we have covered everything. And on that note, we can wrap it up. An hour. Wow. Did everything within an hour. Go me getting faster all the time. Wasting less time. So, I'm going to love you and leave you. Um, anybody wants anything doing within uh, the context of games, programming games, uh, knowledge on how to do something, anything, really, then I am more than happy to help. I will not do... Um, applications as they need security and as far as I can tell there isn't any so games is fine no security needed I'm happy to help you out with those otherwise I'd have to invent the security for the applications and I'm not doing that take care peeps keep coding and above all have fun <laughs>